We've been doing this uh, ankylosing spondylitis or difficult patient osteotomies uh, who have uh, shapes which are not compatible with normal tables and we have tried a number of innovative uh, techniques but this is new. This is the first time we have ventured into a dimension of uh, 3D and materials. We have also ventured into materials. What materials uh, would support a patient safely for as many hours because uh, pressure sores become an issue. Uh, after uh, uh, surgery for, for, for so many hours. Ankylosing spondylitis is a chronic medical condition which involves the joints of the spine. Uh, with severe inflammation over a period of time, um, the spine remodels and then fuses. Like, uh, liken that to uh, a brick wall that has bad mortar that starts to lean over. It will lean over and lean over and then become fixed in that new position, which in this circumstance is where the patient's chin is on her chest. So what we've done uh, in the spinal surgical unit, including in the Department of Anesthetics, is manage uh, spinal correction in complex ankylosing spondylitis patients for a number of years and we've got experience with managing a number of these patients and they present significant positioning challenges uh, because they need positioning face down, that's in the prone position. For lengthy uh, complex surgery that's very challenging in terms of surgical procedure and also anaesthetic procedure in terms of airway management and safely positioning the patients on their front. This patient lives 100 miles distant from Salford Dry and local uh, NHS providers were unable to offer the help that we can probably provide for her. So she came across to us, initially saw uh, my surgical colleague Saeed Mohammed, who picked up the phone and asked me uh, to go down and see the patient and see whether or not it was even feasible to start the journey of planning to get this patient through a surgical journey. Well, I've had uh, ankylosing spondylitis since the age of 19 um, and I've uh, been functioning perfectly adequately with it for about 40 years, going on, you know, absolutely fine. Um, about two and a half years ago, my uh, neck area collapsed, uh, fell forward like this, and uh, we've been fighting ever since to get somebody to address the problem and to help me to try and get back to some semblance of normal living. At around this time, we were invited to the a Digital Eagles Lab at Salford Keys room, which is the Barclays Digital Eagles Lab. We'd embarked on the journey for this patient using old technology and what effectively happened was in one afternoon when we were presented with a, a, a 3D reconstruction of a, an anonymous foot. I asked the, the technician at the lab is could he make me a shoe and not the foot? Expecting a not, not sure answer, I got an answer in 30 seconds, which is he extracted the foot off the screen and made a shoe. So we came away with a bit of a light bulb moment, actually, which was us thinking that if we captured surface topography data using digital imaging in the form of uh, probably CT, but could also be infrared technology, then we could craft custom devices for safe positioning of patients. This situation now, where we've got a, a model of a patient that's been virtualized, so it's already in the, the digital domain, we can discuss as a team about the different positioning uh, devices that we want to use or the different uh, molding that we want to use, and that can be done in the virtual space. So actually, uh, in, in an engine, from an engineering perspective, this is called rapid prototyping, where you go through a series of engineering iterations without actually making the final product, which is the expensive bit. From, from that point of view, we can sit around and you know, discuss the challenges that we've got from, a, from, a, from the whole team. So we've got the medical physics guys involved, the research and development guys, 
the uh, engineers, the ODPs, us the anaesthetists and the surgeons to come up with a final solution. Um, they've actually been incredible. They've actually been to our house to sort out the final positioning. I mean, yeah. these people are beyond words. They also want this, you know, Just, sort of have made it easier, easier than, yeah. it, than it could yeah. be possible. You know, they made like we had to have three scans in one day, didn't we? Yeah, you know, MRI. we came here and they arranged them. They did them all in the same yeah. day, you know. Yeah. It's Everything's done to facilitate you, the patient, and you're treated like a human being. It's meant the world to us, it's why we're still here. I was asked to combine a lot of her appointments together because of the distance that she lived. So we were able to combine a pre-op appointment with a heart scan at the same time and an appointment to see Dr Smurthwaite as well, just to cut down on the amount of visits that she had. She was difficult to plan not just from the surgical perspective and the anaesthetic, but we, me and Victoria struggled a lot with the skin when we had the MDT. We had to take into consideration the fact that she's had some pre-existing pressure sores. We try and have the patients as fit as possible. But with Helen, we had to deal with those, make what we could of it and try and get over all these different hurdles that we came across. And it was difficult to keep Helen and Phil motivated throughout all this complex pre-op workup. There were times when they did feel really fed up, really desperate with everything. We have made every effort that we can to make this as safe as possible. We are trepidatious about the journey because it is a huge undertaking for the patient, but in terms of the question about the digital production of the positioning device, we are totally confident it will do what we need it to do. I'm nice and still, Helen. The only way of restoring her alignment would be to osteotomize, to break the spine and to straighten it. However, the, the apex of the problem lies uh, in the thoracic part of the spine, which is the, the riskiest part, if you like. came across for the half past one, she just come into, um, I think, ICU when I came in the car and looked at her, she was in bed, obviously sedated, but I thought, my God, that's Helen, her face. I'm looking at her without having to duck down under, you know, to, <laughs> to see her. It's, I mean, she's covered in regalia and stuff, you know, tubes and that, but it was just the most magical thing, sorry. <laughs> It's just the most beautiful moment in my life to see her looking up even though she wasn't awake. I said, I've got my Helen back. When I went to see her on, hit, on ICU the first day, they'd kept her sedated. So obviously I didn't know how she was feeling. She looked phenomenal. Phil was thrilled. Um, Everything was going well, she was stable, they were happy with her from that aspect. When I first saw her awake, I was actually shocked at how loud her voice was and that was with a trachea in, so I think Phil was a bit worried then that he was gonna be getting shouted that because I said, like her voice is even louder now than it was before a surgery. Um, she, was, she was just so pleased, she was just so delighted to be able to see everybody and she's doing remarkably well. So, but I was, I was gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked when I saw her. It's really satisfying to see such a great outcome. Well, apparently I, people told me afterwards that everybody stood and cried. I think, I mean, I've been beyond tears for a long time, as I told you. I just find it quite amazing. Like being given your, your life back on the plate, and now you've got to relearn to live and remember who you were again. They were one of the things we were in the, the, the clothes shop downstairs, you know, and she says, what's that thing at the top there? Wait a minute, you know, it's on the top rack, you know. <laughs> I said to her, you haven't been able to do that for three, you know, three years. We've had a, 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 almost like a quantum leap in the way we approach our patients and the way we position our patients 
for particularly complex spine surgery, but this relates to all patients, doesn't it? This is not just about a patient having a neck operation or a back operation, being in the prone position that is face down. This applies to all patients, really. I think it's almost like there's a paradigm shift in the way we approach things because we are now, as a group of clinicians, engaging with the technological process and, and embracing it. But they've kept us going. They've kept us believing that we could do this thing and I could get back to my beloved poetry. And our artwork and what have you. These people are, I can't ever, I express to you what they meant to us.